G'day guys, Ames here from Sparky's on the Loose. Today I'm going to talk about safety equipment. I'm going to talk about what we carry, why we carry it, how it's come in handy and all that jazz. We'll go through what we carry in our first aid kit with all the medicines. We'll talk about the sat phone, why I love the sat phone. We'll talk about PLBs, number one thing you should have traveling. And yeah, we'll go through just firefighting equipment and some other flares and little bits and bobs that we carry for safety equipment. So yeah, let's get into it. All right, so we're going to jump straight in and talk about PLBs. Now, PLBs are personal locating beacons. You've probably heard of EPIRBs. The difference is EPIRBs are used on water and it's generally registered to a vessel, whereas PLBs are registered to a person or a vehicle and are generally used on land. So that's the difference between a PLB and an EPIRB. This PLB I got before we left. It was a no-brainer for me. I got one with GPS. Highly recommend getting a PLB with GPS. The sole reason, if you're letting this off with GPS, they can narrow it down to 200 meter radius on where you're letting this off, as opposed to one without GPS, and it's like a two to five K radius. So if you're letting this off, you're in trouble. So I'd much rather be found pretty quickly, you know, in that 200 meter radius, as opposed to like a five K radius, because, you know, that time could be all it takes really, like, yeah. All right, so when you buy one of these, it'll come with paperwork and you'll need to register it with AMSA. It's completely free and you can do it all online. You're just putting in details. So if you're activating this, they know what they're looking for. People, the description of the car, just that sort of stuff. Emergency contacts, you'll be putting in your personal information. So it's all free, make sure you fill that out. Keep it, keep it updated. For this one, I got a reminder because it been clicked over for two years just to go onto the website and make sure all my details were correct which they were so yeah make sure you register it with AMSA. Alright so how do these work so if you're gonna let this off under all the gizmos this is the aerial flip that up and then there's a button in there you press that button um, and this will start flashing beeping and it's doing its thing that's what you want so basically this sends a signal up to satellites and traveling aircraft and it will relay a message down to Canberra. And then from Canberra, that's when they start to escalate it to a possible search party. Now, you know how I was talking about AMSAR before? Obviously their first point of call is they're gonna to try to call you because you might've accidentally bumped this or you know, knocked it or something. So they're gonna to try to call you and say, hey, your beacon's going off. Obviously, if you're in distress, you might not have phone signal, so then they're going to go to the next point of call. They generally then go through like your emergency contacts. They'll say, hey, this beacon is going off over here. Does this sound right? And then from there, they just keep escalating it to obviously a search party to, pretend to potentially come and rescue you. So this beacon, this PLB cost us $260 and that's with a battery life of five years. So highly recommend when you're buying one to check the battery. I'll give you a quick tip. When we bought this one, I bought it in uh, January 17. We left for our lap March 17. So when you're buying one, you wanna make sure you check the battery because you don't wanna be buying one that sat on the shelf for a couple of years. Cause obviously that's two years then taken out of your battery life. I have heard people buying them. So obviously then it doesn't expire now till December, 2022. That's full five years battery. So make sure you check that, that's a handy tip for you. All right, now for our PLB, we keep this in the center console of the nav. That seems the most logical place to keep it, and I'll tell you why. One reason, because obviously we're constantly on the road, driving, that sort of thing. We spend a lot of time in the car, so it just makes sense to have it you know, in the car. In the center console, it's easily accessible, but it can't easily be bumped. So that's another reason. And a big reason on why we decided to put it there was Say worst case scenario, we're driving along and we have a car accident and flip the car. Myself or Kurt might be trapped with our seat belts because obviously the car could be upside down, but we could both potentially just with an arm reach in, get the PLB out and activate it. So that's a big reason on why we keep it in the center console. This makes the most sense to us. So PLB is my number one thing. Everyone traveling should get $250 and it could potentially save your life. So make sure you get one. Now we'll go on to the next thing. We'll talk about the sat phone. All right guys, so now we're gonna talk about our sat phone. Our sat phone is, is an Iridium 9575 Extreme Rugged Handset. That means it's waterproof, dustproof, shockproof, everything. 
Now, to get a sat phone um, before the trip was pretty much a no-brainer for me, but it took a little bit of convincing to Kurt. He's come around now. The reason we wanted the sat phone was we knew we were going to go off the beaten track. We were going to go remote places for weeks on end. So the main reason we wanted a sat phone was peace of mind and knowing that we could talk to people when we're in the most remote places around Australia. With the Iridium, they have 100% coverage Australia-wide. So every time we have turn this on in, re in a remote place, I have gotten signal. Pop the antenna up, you point it to the sky, you just make sure you're not in like a gully or anything, make sure you're sort of up high and it's turned on and it's gotten me signal every time we've needed it. When you're in these remote places, obviously you don't have Telstra, you don't have Optus, Vodafone, any of that. So having the sat phone means we could have signal and talk to anyone at any time, which is a big thing, just peace of mind. For example, if we broken down somewhere, we can ring up a mechanic, get mechanical advice, or possibly organize a tow. And we can still speak to family and friends. It's a phone, so we can call anyone about anything. Even on bitumen, if you're driving a big, a big distance between point A and point B, there is black spots where you do not have phone signal. So you don't necessarily have to be remote to have or want one of these. I've driven plenty of stretches on bitumen where we haven't had signal for hours, just because we're driving between towns. So a good, reason for having the sat phone is also just medical emergencies. Come across a car accident or anything like that, we can raise help straight away and obviously yeah, find out what we need to be doing. So the main reason I got this style sat phone is I have the utmost confidence it'll work in any scenario. It's in a weatherproof box, but it's weatherproof itself. So if the car floods or anything dramatic happens, I have absolute peace of mind. I can pull this out, turn it on and it'll work and we can get help. So that's why I sort of went for a whole nother handset. I have heard of like sat sleeves and stuff, but I'm personally not a fan because, how's those flies? I'm personally not a fan of those sat sleeves because they rely on your mobile phone. If your phone gets water damage, crack screen, anything like that, I believe those sat sleeves are useless. So that's why I went for a whole nother handset because yeah, have the utmost peace of mind it'll work. So I bought, we bought this handset outright, it's brand new. We bought it a month before we were leaving for our trip. It was on a plan to pay off the handset and obviously a plan for the mobile, the SIM plan. And that was for $119 a month. So you break that down into your weekly budget and it's not too bad. It's now been two years, so we own this handset outright. And now our plan has dropped down to, it's like $30 a month. So that's purely paying for the SIM plan now. So I think it's a well worthy investment because we're going to have the satellite phone for life now because obviously not only for travel but once we go back home, mini adventures, go out on a boat, all that sort of stuff, we can take this with us. So that's why we opted to buy new. That doesn't mean you have to buy a new sat phone and there's plenty of second hand ones available you could buy. You can even rent one if you're just going to do a small trip and you don't really want to buy one. I know there's companies out there that can do that. So. Yeah, just think about where you're going. We bought our sat phone. We got it from Telstra. Yeah, Telstra, give us a deal. <laughs> nah, just kidding. Um, so it came with all this paperwork. It comes with CDs. It comes with extra charges, tanners, just cables, that sort of stuff, which all just live in this box. I'll show you a quick handy tip that I do for ours. It comes with obviously its own phone number and Bugger if I know this phone number off by heart. So before we left, I just got a labeler and I just put the phone number here. Because if you're calling anyone for any reason and they're like, hey, what's your number? We need to give you a call back. You can just rattle that number straight off to them without sort of mucking around and searching for it. So there's a little handy tip for you. A big reason we got the sat phone was obviously when we go remote, we can stay in touch with family and friends. Throughout our trip, we've spent weeks on end in remote places without reception. So when we're in these places, all our family and friends know that we have the sat phone. And if we're out of reception for a couple of days, we start checking this every afternoon, just seeing if any text messages have come in. For example, if my, say, uncle back home had a heart attack and I didn't know, my, one of my family members would send a message to this and then obviously call and see what's going on. As opposed to having no contact, coming out of the bush, say, two weeks later, and finding out he was on his last legs and he just died yesterday. Yeah, it's not something that we want to do. I'd rather know about it straight away, and then we can take action and decide what we want to do. Yeah, as opposed to, yeah, finding out a bit too late. So that's just one, I know it's sort of a worst case scenario on why we wanted the sat phone, just to purely keep in touch with family and friends and 
any medical emergencies really. I mean, not only can they let us know, obviously we can use this too for medical emergencies, calling for help, calling for doctor's advice, yeah. So I think that's all the reasons on why we love the sat phone, why we chose the sat phone. Something for you to consider if you think you're going to need a sat phone. Obviously, I always recommend carrying it. The more safety equipment, the better. Carry all the stuff, hoping you never need it. But if you do need it, it's instantly paid for itself. So yeah, we'll get on to the next thing and we'll show you guys what's in our first aid kits. All right, so now we're going to show you what's in our first aid kit. Start with the big daddy. We'll show you what's in him. Now for this first aid kit, I would have got it custom built before I left. I have a very good friend who owns her own first aid business. So I worked with her on setting this up to carry everything that I wanted and needed. So it is sort of a custom built kit. So we'll start by showing you in. This is the main compartment in here. Now, hot tip, no one remembers everything to do with first aid. I can admit that. I don't remember everything. So we keep our first aid books sitting on top here. So if anything happens, we've got reference material to look up. Say like for anaphylactic shock, strains, sprains, anything like that, you can just quickly look it up, see what you need, see what you need to do and go from there. Because it might not always be you using this, someone could be using this on you. So yeah, handy tip, yeah, get some first aid books and that's the first thing they'll see when they open it up. So in here, top section, full of bandages, all that sort of stuff, wound dressings. I mean, I'm sure you guys know what's in a first aid kit. I'll just quickly go through it. We got snake bite, bandage, you know, containers, triage blankets, everything and anything you can think of is in this kit. Wound dressings, we've got splints. We've got an array of splints. So splints is if you like break your hand or you need to mobilize something. We've got little ones for arms and we've also got big ones in there for your legs. Sharps container, band-aids, you know, eye wash, just all sorts of stuff, alcohol swabs, anything, like I said, you can think of is in here. Medicine, mask, uh, sorry, medicine cup, triage blankets, CPR mask, sick bag cups, better I, sorry, iodine swabs, ice pack, dressing strips. So a lot of the stuff is kept in here. And also, I'll just quickly show you. I'll just show you what's up the top here. So what we got in here, We've just got more tape, thermal blankets, cotton swabs. There's a little pocket torch here, more bandages and stuff. I'll show you what's at the front. This is where we start talking into, we start getting into the medicines that we carry, which I'll start going through what medicines we carry. But in here, we've just got more bandages. We've got a thermometer, scissors, scalpel, tweezers. Just anything you can think of is in this first aid box. All right, so now we're going to talk about what medicines we carry. Now, one of the number one things I recommend that you should carry is hydrolytes. The amount of times we've needed these and given them to other people has been countless. Heat, activities, it can just get you, and hydrolytes, yeah, pretty much they speak for themselves. I'm sure you know what they are. Definitely recommend carrying hydrolytes in your first aid kit. Now another major thing that we carry in our first aid kit is EpiPens. Believe it or not, you can buy an EpiPen over the counter. It'll probably cost you about $100 and you need to show your driver's license, but you can get one without a prescription. I explained to the nurse that I was going remote and she highly recommend getting an EpiPen. For anaphylactic shock, obviously, they do have an expiry date. So one of ours has expired recently. So I've had to go buy another one, which is fine. I don't mind spending money on safety and just keeping the other one as a spare because it still could work the adrenaline in it. So yeah, we carry EpiPens. So if you're ever in trouble, you want the Sparkies to be around because our first aid kit has got everything. <laughs> now I'll show you what some more medicines that we do carry. Now these are all kept in the side pockets. So antiseptic cream, diarrhea relief. We've got ibuprofen, if I pronounced that right. Indigestion and heartburn, burn aid cream. We carry quells, more hydrolytes. And in the side, we've got derma cream. We've got aspros, strong pain relief and we've got hay fever and allergy tablets. We also carry your basic Panadol, Strepsils, all your common stuff, they just sit in the van. I should honestly probably chuck a few of them in here, um, but we do have them if we need them, they're just sitting in the van in a 
separate spot. So that's what's in our big first aid kit with all the medicines and all the gear. Quickly show you what's in our little rescue swag. If you've watched our hiking, what's in our backpack hiking video, you may have seen it, but I'll quickly run through what's in this one. So this is our rescue swag. Got this online. I think it was about $150. And we mainly carry this one when we're going hiking. It's just small, compact, and it can just sit in our backpack. So what's in this one? I'll undo it. Make sure I open it right. Yep. So it's called a rescue swag. So it comes with these three kits. It comes with Dr. ABCD in case you have to do CPR. But the bag itself has got many uses, which it tells you when you buy it. You can zip it up, use it as a bucket, you can use it as a splint. It's got a range of things the bag itself can be used for. And then we go into the three little kits we've got here. The first one is for minor injuries, and then it just tells you exactly what's in the bag. So in this one, it's got wound dressings, first day, uh, sorry, Band-Aids, eye wash, forceps, splinters. So anything minor, you're probably wanting to go in that bag. And then the second bag is snake bite, burns, sprains, and strains. So if you get bitten by a snake, snake bandage right there. And then obviously sprains, strains, and burns. So all that's in this one. That's why I love this thing. It's just all itemized, easy to read, easy to find. And then the last bag is major injuries. So this one starts talking about amputee bags, thermal blankets, shock management. So this one, like you could be doing a little bit of surgery. So it looks like we never need that one, but it's there if you need it. Yeah, that's why we love the rescue swag. So a main reason that we carry a lot of medicines is we're self-sufficient. Obviously we go remote, anything we need is in here. Another major, another big reason is we buy a lot of this stuff we're in major towns, we need to stock up or anything. So the prices are quite low. If you're gonna need any of this in a remote town, they may or may not have it, and you may be looking at two to three times the price. Not that that's a problem, because if you need anything, you know, you're gonna need it. But for us, we've just got peace of mind that we've got everything we need, a lot of medicines, and they're right there. So if something's happening in the middle of the night, we don't have to wait for the chemist to open, we can just, yeah, use what we got. So that's why we went with medicines, in our big first aid kit and then obviously yeah the smaller first aid kit which goes hiking guys so i think that pretty much wraps up first aid kits what's in them what we carry if you've got any questions just let us know quickly touch on firefighting equipment and the flares that we carry so now we're just going to quickly touch on what firefighting equipment we carry i'm sure i don't need to go into too much detail on why you need to carry this stuff i'll just speak about what we carry so for us we carry three fire extinguishers and we carry two fire blankets. One fire extinguisher and one fire blanket live here in the canopy and that's purely because we have the portable cooker. So if we're cooking away from the van, the cooker generally sits here so just keep the fire fighting stuff near the fire source. So that's why these two live here. And we have another fire extinguisher behind my seat in the car. That's purely for the fact that if there's a fire pretty close or pretty rapid, it might take time to unlock this canopy to get this fire extinguisher. So that one behind my seat is just really readily accessible. For example, for an engine fire or something like that, I can just grab it, chuck it to Kurt and, you know, put it out. And then obviously the other fire extinguisher and other fire blanket live in the caravan. Obviously we've got the cooker in there. So the fire blanket just sits on the wall to the side. And then we have the fire extinguisher, which is like right behind me down near the couch. So both easily accessible if there's a sort of fire near the cooker. Quick tip, just keep an eye on your fire extinguishers and make sure that they stay charged. I noticed the other week our fire extinguisher in here had actually lost charge. So for us, it was just easy to order a new one online and uh, replace it. But there is places that will recharge them and stuff like that. Just for us, it was easy to just get a brand new one. So yeah, just make sure you keep an eye on them, make sure the pin stays in. You know, just make sure they're in working order because when you're going to need this, you want it to work. <laughs> I need to say too much more. Just make sure you guys at least get one fire extinguisher. You just never know when you'll need it. Sort of a funny story before we left for our trip. Me and Kurt went camping. We were having a campfire and then a little bit of gust of wind came and it got a little bit out of control. These things happen. Luckily, Kurt had a fire extinguisher. We were able to put it out before it got too major. So, yeah, you just never know when you're going to need it. But at least it's there if you need it. So yeah, get yourselves a fire extinguisher. And then the last thing, we carry flares. You're probably thinking, why the hell do these guys have flares? Just my history volunteering for the Coast Guard. I know the importance of flares out on the water. So I just grabbed a couple just to keep with us. It's just another thing that we can use to attract attention or let off in the case of emergency. 
I'm um, not saying that you need flares, but we, yeah, we just carry a few and they just live in this dry bag and that just lives in the car. Just want to make sure if you carry a lot of this stuff, just make sure everyone knows how to use it. All right, guys, so I think that pretty much wraps up the safety video. I think I've gone through everything on what we carry, why we carry it, why you should carry it. If you have any questions or queries about anything, just leave us a comment. I'll get back to you. I'm sort of the safety guru of the team. A lot of this was sort of my undertaking and my push to get all the safety equipment. So it's sort of my expertise. So hopefully that wasn't too long and boring. Hopefully you learned something, took something out of that video. Like this video if you found it helpful, give us a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. And yeah, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks guys. Bagger off! Um, our sat phone is an Iridium 9795. So one of the main thing. So one of the. So one of the numbers. Have a minute. <laughs> Hurry up! I know you're hovering. I wanna know. on yeah go on they go on they go on da, da, da. jack that's all i'm doing i quit i quit <laughs>